I have a question from uh, Itzhak. Itzhak is asking about the black thing that I'm describing, uh, that it was very scary. Itzhak is asking, and I, I have to actually read it from the screen because it's a long question, but the question is that it was scary because the unknown aspect of it and, uh, and that I didn't know if I ever going to get out of it. But he's asking if one has the knowledge of, from Torah, obviously, that this is a part of the cleansing process for one's neshama, one's soul, would that make it less scary? That's the first question. The second question is he, that Yitzchak is asking if I saw flames, if I saw Gehenna, hell, and if I saw actual flames. So I'll start with the second question. First of all, all my process, I didn't still reach Gehenna, what is called hell. Gehenna, hell, Gehenom, is a, is a cleansing process for the soul after it was judged already for its sins. Uh, the Rith Gehenna, in, in essence, it's not a bad place. It is an extremely bad place because whatever cleansing process one has to go through, you know, is scary, painful, and etc., etc. But the, the, the idea why, it's a good thing because it's a cleansing process for the soul. In order for the soul to go higher in a, and to get to reach a much higher level of spirituality, which means that the soul has the ability of, of uh, receiving higher godly revelation, it can only be done when this, once the soul is being cleansed. So, in essence, the idea of, of hell, of Gehenna, is a good thing because it cleanses the soul to be able to get to a higher level in, a spirit, in spirituality, to be able to receive higher and greater levels of, of godly revelations. Uh, so, in, in any of my experience, I didn't even reach Gehenna. The Gehenna is after a person, after the soul is being judged. Uh, so I can't, I, first of all, I wasn't, I didn't see Gehenna, so obviously I didn't see any flames or fires. I can tell you from what I saw and from what I learned, it's not real flames. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a, it says in the Talmud that the heat of fire in this world for one second times it 60, that will be the, the, the heat of hell. Obviously, you know, take the hottest flame in this world and touch it for one second, obviously it's burning. And times at 60, times, you know, eternity, that's pretty, pretty hot. But it doesn't mean literally the flames and the fire. So, from, I didn't see any flames. Uh, but from what I know, it's not a physical flame. It's just a way of describing, you know, what's in Gehenna. Gehenna has different aspects to it. There's a Gehenna of cold, not necessarily a Gehenna of fire. It says that a person is being cleansed and his process in Gehenna is according to how he was in this world. So if, this world, if, it, if, if a person was in this world a very like, hot-tempered per person and very angry and his reactions were like, like fire, then he's being judged with fire. But if a person was very cold and very like... Uh, uh, cold in regards to, to Torah, very like numb and, and, and stuff like that, then he's judged in a cold Gehenna. So unfortunately, and thank God, I didn't reach Gehenna, so I can't say, I for sure didn't see any flames, but from what I know, it's not literal, literally flames. As regards to the other uh, question, uh, it's kind of related to the second question. Gehenna is a cleansing process. Hell is a cleansing process. Which basically the, the soul comes down to this world. It gets involved in uh, sins. It gets involved in things that are even not sins but are not godly related. And what it does, it creates a blemish on the soul. It creates dirt on the soul. So once it goes up to its uh, place, to its original place, it needs to be cleaned. Exactly like how you take a child and he goes out to play and he comes back and all of his clothes are full of mud and dirt and it also happens to be on his hands there's some dirt. So some of the dirt can be washed off in, you know, in cold water. Some of the dirt needs to be washed with hot water and some of the dirt is so part of the body already, like you take a marker 
and the and you and you and you color with a marker and the marker like really penetrates the skin you need like not only hot water you need soap and some chemicals and you need to like really brush it and you need to really like scrub it and it hurts you know this child screams hey stop doing it you're hurting me but that's the only way of taking the dirt out so it's kind of the same thing a person you know gets involved in this world with sins gets involved in things that are the opposite of godliness and the soul gets dirty and uh, in obviously in a spiritual way it gets dirty and it needs to be cleaned so some of the cleaning hurts a little bit some of the cleaning hurts a lot and some of the cleaning some of the dirt is so deep and part of the soul that it needs a, a serious scrub to get it out and it hurts so this is the whole point of, of, of hell of Gehenna so what I went through this is not Gehenna what I went through was basically the angel of death took me away took the neshama out of the body and was supposed to deliver it the fact that I didn't have any Torah or any mitzvahs, my soul was naked, was vulnerable. When a person studies Torah and when a person does mitzvahs, he covers the soul with, with Torah. And it protects the soul when it leaves the body. I didn't have any of that protection. So any, anything that was a, 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 the opposite of Torah was affected in a negative way. Besides the fact that the angel of death, the black thing, how I'm describing it, the whole process, and I'm not going into details in the video, there's a lot of details that I didn't say, that, that was, the whole process was very scary and, you know, very painful and all, and all, everything that I described. But it wasn't a, a cleansing process. It wasn't something that was cleaning my, my soul. There's another two concepts uh, that I think I, I talked about it in one of the videos. One of them is called Chibut kever for the same idea that the soul gets dirty and uh, from its sins and it's from unwanted uh, deeds and in order to be entered to a higher level of spirituality it needs to be cleaned off. So you know in, old, in old, olden days they used to take like a rug and throw it over a railing and you know bang it so all the dust will come out that's kind of the same thing that the soul has to go through because it's been involved in this world. So it needs to be get banged on it to all the dirt to come out just for it to be able to, to enter a higher world, a more spiritual world. So that process is called Chibut kever. It's a, a fairly painful process because imagine, you know, the soul has to get beaten to get all the dirt out. There's, a way, there's ways to, to, to soften that process and there's a ways to even... Uh, to even uh, get, get completely annulled from this uh, process. Uh, you know, obviously the more a person has mitzvahs, the more a person has Torah with him, it helps him. There's different ways uh, that Chazal say how one can protect himself from this process is by learning Mishnayos uh, off by heart, learning Tanya off by heart. Uh, there's different ways. There's something that's called Perek Shira. It is known by Chazal that, uh, that uh, it prevents the process of Chibut kever. So part of that black thing that I'm talking about is Chibut kever. The soul needed to be, get some kind of a cleanse to be able to enter a higher level. Another uh, concept that I spoke about a few times is what's called Kafakela. Kafakela is basically like a slingshot. And the soul gets, like exactly like a slingshot, the soul gets thrown across the universe. And it sees everything from beginning to end. And when I say everything, it is the truth. And when the soul realizes how much it didn't go by the truth, it creates a, a sorrow that there's no words to describe in it. it. The soul understands how bad it was and more than that, what it could achieved and what it didn't do. And it creates a very strong spiritual sorrow. So this is another part of the process that I was... I was revealed the truth. In this level, in our world, sorry, there's two, two ways to see everything. The truth and a lie. One can see the reality through the truth and one can just hide behind a lie. Once you leave this world, there's only one thing. Truth. MS. There's only one thing. You can't, there's no, you can't hide behind a lie. So I saw the MS and the MS, the reality, didn't look so good. 
because I saw how bad I was, I saw how wrong was the way I chose, I saw what I could have achieved, and, and it creates, it gives the soul big sorrow what it could have achieved. One thing that I forgot to say about the whole Chibut HaKever, one thing that really helps the soul uh, pass this whole process is when its disciples, I don't know if I'm using the right word, the, the right word disciples, but when people who are remaining after, like the children uh, or brothers or sisters, say Kaddish on the soul. When a person says Kaddish on his father or mother or relative, that really helps the soul from uh, this whole cleansing process uh, of Chibut HaKever. That's why it's very important that people say Kaddish over a relative that passed away. So anyways, to go back to what I was saying, I didn't get even to Gehenna. I was just going through different processes. Uh, I don't know if this is such a word. I was, the, I was going through a process of cleansing the soul to be able to even enter a higher spiritual realm. So the first part was like kind of like a chibuta kevel. The second part was like kind of a kafakela. The third part was just facing the angel of death, which was the most scariest thing. A, like I said, I didn't know how I got there. I didn't know how I'm getting out of there. I, for me, that was the reality. More than that, I was faced with all my sins. When a person sins, he creates what's called a klipa. A klipa is a negative force, a ne negative shell, a negative energy. And that negative force, you know, one can call it malach chabala, malachei chabala. It's like destructive angels. And they... They, the person who did it, he owns those angels, and those angels come to basically haunt him. They come to, to that person, to the soul, and they say, I belong to you. You have to take care of me. So I was more exposed to all these destructive angels that I created with my sins. So the whole process was just not fun, was extremely scary, was painful, but still it wasn't hell, it wasn't Gehenna. So for your question, if one has the knowledge of Torah, that it's just a cleansing process, would this make it less? My, cat, my answer is no. A, because it's not a cleansing process. As Gehenna, it's a different type of cleansing process. Second of all, the fact that a person knows that it will cleanse him, I mean the neshama, it doesn't reduce the fear or the pain. There's a whole concept that when a soul is sitting in Gan Eden, in heaven, and it has the urge to get elevated to a higher level in Gan Eden, as it's well known, there's two levels of Gan Eden, Gan Eden Tachton, Gan Eden Elyon, the higher level of Gan Eden and the lower level of Gan Eden, and in this, there's eternal uh, levels. For one to leave one level of Gan Eden, of heaven, and to enter a higher level, one needs to go into what's called Nahar Dinu, it's a river of fire. Obviously, it's not a real river with real flames, but it's kind of similar to the idea of a river of fire. And one has to dip, like the soul has to dip in, and what happens, everything that it remembered before is being completely wiped out, and he's able to enter a higher level of Gan Eden, which, what he will achieve in it, is greater revelations of godliness. So the soul, before it does it, understands the greatness of going into a higher level, because it sees godliness, it sees godly revelation and it wants more. So it says, it's worth it for me to be barbecued in this river because I know after that I'm going to gain much greater revelations. The, the, the pain that I have to go through is worth everything to go to that higher level. Almost like saying, it's worth going on a diet for a whole week because at the end of the week I'm going to go crazy with all these cakes and, and, and sweets. So... Before the process, the soul understands how good it is for her. But during the process, the knowledge of, oh, it's so great, is kind of being removed and you don't, it doesn't reduce, let's call the pain or the anguish or the fear, because knowing that later on it will be better. Uh, one needs to acquire as much as Torah and mitzvahs in this world to reduce that process. And it can even reduce it to a point that it's barely felt. When a tzaddik leaves this world, there's no chibut kevil, there's no uh, kafakela, the tzaddik, you know, a whole pam pamalia, a whole, uh, you know, entourage of tzaddikim come and pick him up. 
So obviously we're not in the level of tzaddikim, so we can do, we, we have to do what's in our ability to do. And that, that is acquiring as much as mitzvahs as possible, because the mitzvahs, as opposed to the Torah, the mitzvahs create a, a covering, a garment that protects the soul from any evil, any evil that comes to hurt the soul, that garment of the mitzvah, of the good deed, protects it from, this, from that, any, anything evil. So one needs to acquire as much as, good, uh, as much as possible mitzvahs, and one should acquire as much as knowledge because of Torah, because the Torah basically also protects the soul from anything bad around it. Why? Because the Torah is ruled to light. Anything the opposite of godliness is ruled for darkness. So the darkness that I saw was so strong because I didn't have any light. And when the soul leaves the body, the only thing it breathes on, the only thing it sustains on is Torah. And if the person doesn't have any Torah, it's a, it's a, it's a massive, massive pain. It's a massive uh, anguish. It's not, I don't even know the word to describe it. It's like a suffering, like almost like you take a person, uh, 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 sorry, a fish out of the water, the first few seconds, it cannot survive without the water. It's almost like taking a person and choking him because the only thing that a person is, is, is sustained is on air. He needs, the person needs air to breathe. Once you block that, uh, that uh, option, a person doesn't have air, he's suffocating. Same thing with the neshama. Once the neshama leaves the body, the neshama doesn't live on food, doesn't live on air, doesn't live on anything. It lives on Torah. The only thing that uh, makes the neshama alive is Torah. So when the neshama has a lot of Torah, it has sustenance, it has how to live. If the neshama doesn't have any Torah to it, it's, the suffering is like su kind of like a suffocation. That's why when the neshama leaves the body, the first week it's staying around the body and it stays in the house. That's why we sit shiva, we sit seven days morning. The neshama is in the house, the soul is still in the house. That's why it's so important that the relatives, they say Kaddish, people come and study there, they say Mishnayot, they study anything to heal him, anything that they do because it basically give the, gives the neshama a sustenance, air to breathe, air to live. So to sum it all up, uh, the, with the process that I went to is not Gehenna. It's just a cleansing process to be able to even enter a higher spiritual world. Uh, no, knowing anything about it prior will not reduce the pain, but knowing anything about it before that means that the person is studying Torah, <laughs> then the, the, the fact that the person studied Torah and acquires the Torah, that protects him to reduce the, the pain and the anguish. So one needs to study as much as Torah as possible. One needs to actually do a lot of good deeds. One, one has to acquire as many as mitzvahs as possible because the mitzvahs are the one that really protects the soul. So I hope I answered the question. This is like trying to, to squeeze a, a, a big concept into 10 minutes. Uh, so I really hope I was able to answer the question and to you know pinpoint uh, uh, the answer if I didn't let me know I'll try to go more in, in, in depth into it but to really to sum it up one needs to study as much as Torah as possible to be able to radiate light the Torah radiate lights which a little bit of light diminishes a lot of a lot of dark and one needs to do a lot of mitzvahs, a lot of good deeds, because they create a garment, a shield, around the body, around, sorry, around the soul. There's a whole concept taught in Tanya that the mitzvah of tzedakah, charity, is like an arm, armorer. And the same way like in olden days how the armorer of the, the soldier was, was a lot of like rings in ch inside each other and it created like a whole or more, and then when an arrow would be shot at that warrior, it wouldn't penetrate because there was too many covering. That's the same uh, effect is being achieved by the, the, the mitzvah of charity, tzedakah. Every time a person gives charity, even if it's a quarter, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, it's actually the quantity and not the quality. Uh, that's what the, the, the altar Rebbe says, the, the, the Rebbe Schneer Zalman from Liadi, he says in Tzedakah, in charity, it's the quantity that, rather than the quality. Uh, every time a person does the mitzvah of Tzedakah, he creates like a little 
part of the of the armoire of the bulletproof vest, the spiritual bulletproof vest, and it creates the neshama from getting hit by any negative force. So my tip is to actually do a lot of charity, to give a lot of tzedakah, because that really creates that spiritual bulletproof vest to prevent any spiritual arrows penetrating and hurting the neshama. So one needs to really be involved in good deeds and mitzvahs and any mitzvahs, any commandments that Hashem tells us to do, that's also a mitzvah. And obviously one needs to study as much as Torah as possible and when a person is involved and immersed in Torah and mitzvahs and Masim Tovim, you know, when the Shama leaves the body, obviously any, any pain that it has to go through will be reduced just because of that merit. Obviously there's more to it. If you're interested, I'll try and maybe record another video explaining more what the one can do in this world to achieve a, a, a policy that will uh, ensure to minimize the pain and the suffering. But uh, just focus on studying Torah as much as you can and, and doing a lot of mitzvahs and you should be fine. So I hope, I know the video became a little bit long, but I hope I answered your question. And if you have any other questions, please let me know.